Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast. The last 124 scale car that I reviewed was the legendary McLaren F1, and the previous 118, the SLR McLaren. So, continuing in the tradition of showing you the McLarens in my Diecast car collection, I think it is high time we look at the next in line, the McLaren MP4-12C. Back in 2011, this was the first standalone supercar McLaren Automotive had released, almost 20 years after their famous F1 from the 90s. Granted, a few years earlier they had teamed up with Mercedes-Benz to create the SLR McLaren, but that was more a joint venture. Now, let's be honest here, McLaren has come a long way since the days of the MP412C. I mean, we got the P1, the 570, the 600, 650, 675, 720, and the Senna. But what's so unique about the McLaren 12C is that even though its original price was as much as a Ferrari 458, it's currently one of the best bang-for-buck supercars out there in the real world. In the US and some European countries, you can actually buy this car for less than a hundred grand. But unlike other budget supercars like the Lotus Esprit, this is a bargain that actually has the performance to beat a Ferrari of its time. Because I can't think of any other supercar right now that has more than 600 horsepower and is cheaper. Now the model that you're looking at here is a 124 scale version of the McLaren MP412C, and this is made by a company called New Ray. This is the first New Ray model that I'm presenting on my channel, and that's because I only have two in total. You can take a guess in the comments which other New Ray I have. In 124 scale, which was the only scale that I was collecting until late 2016, the only other manufacturer that makes the 12C, which you don't have to assemble and paint yourself, is Burago. And the Burago McLaren 12C is definitely a solid model with arguably better build quality and more details than this new Ray McLaren 12C. However, three things convinced me back in the day to get this new Ray instead. First of all, the color. Burago made the 12C in yellow, which kind of makes it look too much like a Lambo, and in volcano orange. But this color right here, is the rich and vibrant Volcano Red Metallic, which only the new Ray had. Secondly, the Burago has no brake discs at all, while this new Ray does. And most importantly, on the Burago, you can open the front trunk and the engine bay cover, but not the doors, which is actually the coolest feature of the McLaren 12C, namely the way its doors swing open. So on this new ray, you can't open the front trunk or the engine bay lid, but for that you can open the doors, and that was really what convinced me to get this one instead. For some reason, no budget manufacturer makes the McLaren 12C in 118 scale, which was also one of the reasons why I was happy with this 124 model for a long time. But last year, the auto art version dropped in price to something like 80 euros, and so I kind of regret that I didn't wait until then. But that's the thing with collecting diecast cars. You never know what drops in price a few years down the line after you've purchased a certain model. And I generally do not repurchase the same car in a different scale. So I stuck with this one, and in this review I'm going to show you what it's got. So taking a look at the front of the McLaren MP4-12C. You'll notice that we have the McLaren badge in the middle. It's just printed on, but it's still there. And. One of the elements that went into the design of the headlamps was that the DRLs were supposed to be shaped just like the McLaren logo. I find that these headlights are done a little bit better than on the Burago, but they still are missing a lot of depth and shading. It's just one silver piece. But at least they don't have any pegs in the middle. 
Further below, you can see the vents. And they actually have an interesting pattern on them, just like on the real McLaren MP412C. And while the vents themselves may not be everyone's favorite, I still think they're shaped in an interesting way. And here's a look at the McLaren MP412C's elegant side profile. What's really cool about this car is that it actually has no door handles. Instead, you slide your hand underneath this groove here, and the door electronically opens up. But this existed only on the early models. Later models came with a button. This blade here on the side is made out of carbon fiber on the real McLaren 12C, and is not in the color of the rest of the body like on this model. That's actually something that Burago got right on its model, but Nure did not. Also what's interesting is that, at least on my model, you have the red metallic on the left side, but just red plastic on the right. And now let's check out the wheels. So as you can see, one advantage of the new ray over the Burago is that it actually comes with brake discs. Now, I was not entirely happy with the lack of shading on these brake discs and rims, and therefore what I did was actually took some black wash, which is very thin down black acrylic paint, uh, Chaos Black from Games Workshop to be more precise, and I just applied it with a paintbrush all over the rims, and the black went into the grooves, and now I think it looks a little bit better. Of course, I could have made the brake discs look a little neater, but I just wanted to highlight the ventilation on the brake discs. And you can see that New Ray did provide us with the McLaren logo in the middle, so that's at least nice. And we have a painted indicator up here, although it's just part of the car body. And here's a look at the rear rims. So again, you can see that the black wash has created a feel of depth and shading to the wheel. Taking a look at the back of the McLaren MP412C, I have to say that this car has a very unique tail end, and that's something that makes it instantly recognizable. Now here in the middle, you can see that we have the McLaren logo, and the two exhaust tips are chromed, or at least painted in very shiny silver. One thing that this model car was missing were the indicators. And so what I did was I painted them in silver right here and here. And it's actually a little hard to do because they're very thin lines. But before, everything was black here, and now I think it looks a little bit better. Of course, on this hyper close-up on the camera, you can see that I didn't work particularly well, but um, on the model, it really does not really look that bad from a distance. Now, one thing, of course, this car is missing is a rear license plate, but otherwise, all the details are there, and I think that overall, New Ray has done a fairly acceptable job regarding the aesthetics of the model. As we move on further up to take a look at the engine, I'd first want to check out the spoiler, because you have this cool spoiler here on the real car, and it would lift back and up like this when the car brakes. And right below the spoiler, you can see a groove indicating the presence of a red brake light. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the engine cover on the McLaren MP412C by New Ray does not open. However, you can still see into the engine. And um, this is a 3.8 liter twin turbo V8 with initially 591 brake horsepower, but within a year was cranked up to 616. Either way, making it more powerful than the engines of both the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560-4 and the Ferrari 458. 0 to 100 km per hour was achievable in 3 seconds, and this car was officially advertised to have a top speed of 333 km per hour. But there's a video right here on YouTube where they filmed the tack going up to 346 kilometers per hour. And that's the Spider, which is a few kilometers per hour slower than the Coupe. I find that hard to believe. Maybe the car was doctored, or the tire or the wind conditions were exceptionally good. But then again, nothing surprises me when it comes to McLaren and performance. 
I mean, they created the world's fastest naturally aspirated road legal car to this day, the F1, with a top speed of 386.7 km per hour, and that's from 1992. In terms of this engine detail on the new ray, um, all the main components are there, but the engine was actually completely unpainted and simple grey plastic with the only things painted being the silver trim around the engine blocks. So what I actually did was I took this car apart and I painted the interior of the engine or the surrounding in black so that it looks a little bit more realistic. Similarly, I also painted the vents on either side of the engine bay cover in black. And I think now it looks a little more like the real thing. And finally, here's what the model looks like with the doors open. This was the main reason why I decided for the new ray. You can see that they actually replicated this pretty well on this 124 scale model. This is definitely one of the coolest opening doors you can get in 124 scale. It's not straight up scissor doors like Lamborghinis or Gullwing like on the DeLorean or SLS, but more a forward and upward swing like on the SLR, which is why they call them butterfly doors. But now let's check out the interior. And this is actually a far more conventional supercar interior compared to the McLaren F1 with its three-seat configuration. Now here's where I made the biggest changes to this model in the sense that when I purchased this car, everything was black, the entire interior. You had all the details, but nothing was painted. So what I did was I decided to paint the interior in this sort of dark bluish gray color and at the same time paint the center console and the vents in silver. And I think that now it looks a whole lot better. And you can see the center console right there with the black LCD screen. And that's actually a touch screen right there in the middle used for navigation, as well as the start button in the middle below it. The seats also have some details on them, although they're a bit hard to see due to the doors. And under the center stack, you have an extra storage area where you also have cup holders on the real car. And now let's check out the driver's side. So you can see that thanks to the paint, uh, the interior is just more visible now. And we've got the uh, three-spoke steering wheel right here in the center. I actually tried to put the McLaren badge on it with a little bit of red paint, but it's a little hard to see. Behind we have the three um, gauge clusters, they have a depth to them, and we also have the stocks at the side of the steering wheel, and then we also have painted floor pedals. But yeah, I mean, for a budget model, the fact that the interior looks like on the real car, it has all the same details modeled into it, but just not painted, is, I guess, to be expected for Nure. I still think overall that the car looks really good. And here's a look at the bottom of the car. You can see it says Made in China. Hopak Nure Manufacturing Limited Dongguan. McLaren MP412C by New Ray. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review of this McLaren MP412C by New Ray in 124 scale. I hope to see you in the next review. Have a wonderful day, and this is Imperial Diecast, signing out.